Aye. Okay, Mayor, whenever you're ready. Okay, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Town of Stellarton Council meeting, February 14th, 2022, at 5.30 p.m. start time. We're meeting via Zoom. Uh, the first item is to approve the agenda. Is there any change or additions to the agenda? Uh, yes, Your Worship. I have two pieces of correspondence that need, need to be added. Um, so that would be 6B, um, a letter from the CEO of Public Housing. And uh, letter C, um, correspondence regarding the 2021 Enabling Accessibility Fund. Okay, if there's no further additions or changes, can I have a motion please to accept? So moved. I'll second, I'll second that. Second. Moved by Councillor Knight, seconded by Councillor Campbell. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded, motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, the minutes are next on January 10th, 2022. They distribute electronically. They're also part of the package. Is there any errors or omissions? Hearing none, can I have a motion to approve, please? I move. I second. Move by Councilor Knight, second by Councilor Lawand. All those in favor of saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Most carried nicely, thank you. Is there any business arising from the minutes? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to a presentation from Creative Picto County. I'd like to welcome uh, the members of Creative Picto County who are here to present. Uh, the Genesis, Joel McCarran, Vice Chair, Monica Rivers, Arts Coordinator. So uh, we'll let you guys take it away. We welcome the Stellar Council meeting. We're interested in what you have to say. First of all, I'd like to thank you, uh, uh, Mayor McGilvery, for having us tonight. I really appreciate you giving us some time. Our pleasure. Uh, Creative Pick the County is a nonprofit volunteer based arts organization committed to encouraging and supporting arts and cultural activities in Pictou County. We are the catalyst for the development of an engaged, growing, and inclusive arts and culture community. As community builders, we support artists and art organizations by offering our collective expertise, mentorship, and providing opportunities to advance Pictou County's uh, local creative potential. Uh, with the support of the many community partners, we also support the creation and collaboration networks and partnerships within the arts community. Tonight uh, with us, we have uh, myself, I'm the vice chair of Creative Pictou. My name is Joe McCachran, and I'm the owner of Aqua Event Management. I have 25 years of event management and fundraising experience. Um, I am also the uh, on the board of directors of FarmWorks and I'm an avid supporter of the local food movement and arts and culture community. Um, my presenting partner tonight is uh, Monica Rivers. Uh, she's also our, our only paid uh, worker for, the, for, the count, for our council. Um, she's our arts coordinator. At, she is uh, recently graduated from Dalhousie University Faculty of Agriculture with a Bachelor of Technology in Small Business Management and completed her graduate certificate program in nonprofit leadership with the Nova Scotia Community College. Uh, we will also be joined tonight by our chair, uh, Denise Lynch, um, and she'll be there for the question period, but won't be presenting. Denise is the owner of Martin Ceramics. Uh, a local ceramic studio here in Pictou County. She is a very active supporter of the local arts community. She is a jured member of Craft Nova Scotia, a member of the Potter's Guild of Nova Scotia, and involved, <clears throat> and involved with numerous uh, community art projects. Uh, in her professional career, Denise worked uh, with Dillard Consulting uh, across Canada and the U.S. on human resource information technology projects. Uh, our board, we are very lucky to have gathered such a an amazing team um, to form our board this year. The collective skills and is truly impressive, uh, including members that are corporate trainers, municipal counselors, trained artists, event producers, professional grant writers, publicists, business advisors, and so, so much more. Uh, we are almost to need a whole additional presentation just to talk about our board. Uh, we're very proud of the board we have, and uh, we encourage you all to take a hop over to our website and check out our board a little more and, uh, and take a look at uh, what we've gathered up. Thank you, Joe. So established in 2013, Creative Pictou County's mission is to be a united voice for promoting and supporting arts and artists in Pictou County. When the organization first started, we asked 
who are the artists in our community and what do they want for an art society. From there, we received a grant and hired strategic arts management to work with us and conducted a needs assessment. So from that, four main themes arose, which were artists wanted a sustainable nonprofit. They wanted support in creative sector economic development, more community engagement and artist exposure. So this past year, we received funding from communities, culture, tourism and heritage, strategic arts management, and from a few local municipalities to complete our strategic plan and a fundraising workshop to guide the organization, the organization as we move forward. So here is a timeline of activities that highlight how Creative Pictou County has connected directly with the town of Stellarton over the past nine years. And you can also visit our website to see the full timeline as well. So most notably is the Arts and Culture Recognition Award that Creative Pictou County nominated all six municipalities for in 2014. Artists from the town participated in our needs assessment in 2014. The Art on the Wall show at the Museum of Industry, which was led by local artists. We joined the Chamber of Commerce in 2018 and developed an arts map in 2019 that highlighted local artists, businesses, and supporters of the arts. In 2020, we released phase one of our online hub and launched ArtFest on Facebook. And in 2021, we supported Curious Crows Coffee Shop with their art on the wall and connected with NSCC to explore opportunities. We had summer programming, which included our Rock and Roam projects and a summer arts bucket list. And then this year, we are working in partnership with the Museum of Industry on an arts kiosk that will display local artwork in the museum. Uh, we have tons of community partners that we work with. These are some of the ones that we've had kind of a formalized agreement with. Uh, so we work a lot with Ignite, um, the Pictou County Chamber of Commerce, um, Pictou County uh, Regional uh, Pictou County Regional Library, De Sears, Nova Scotia Community College, DeCoste Center, New Glasgow Square, and the Mental Health Foundation of Nova Scotia. Uh, as I said, though, there are many, many more if you go over to our website and check some of our other partners. And to date, Creative Pictou County has brought in $81,797 through municipal, provincial, and federal funding, as well as donors and revenue. So we have received project grants in addition to in-kind support from the municipalities. We've accessed employee programs and received project grants from the provincial government and received summer student funding through the federal government. And this year we have developed an ambitious budget of approximately $86,500, which will be achieved through the launch of our membership program, fundraising, donors and government grants. So the funds will go towards staff, which includes a full-time arts coordinator and summer students, programming, administration, which has been kept low thanks to partnerships and working remotely. So the main portion of that is on software and for rent of a space to have shows, sales and events that we are considering. And Joe will be speaking to our financial goals for 2022 in the upcoming slides. One of the major lessons that we've learned is that operational funding is critical uh, to the nonprofit success and sustainability. So our goals this year are to establish operational sustainability 
Uh, we're launching a paid membership program, which includes benefits for both the CPC and the, the partners like Unite, Chamber, and Desiers. Uh, applying for municipal grants, leveraging our provisional uh, wage subsidy programs and project grants, continuing to apply for federal funding and fundraising events such as the Makers Festival, Halloween Takeover, Photo Shoot, uh, Coloring Book, and uh, multi-tiered donor, donor program that we're starting. So we've been very busy planning programs, events, and activities for this year. And on the timeline, you can see what we have planned thus far. I will only be highlighting some of the initiatives we have scheduled as there's so much to discuss. But this year for fundraisers, we'll be hosting a pet photo shoot, developing a coloring book with local artists' artwork and helping support the Makers Festival. Projects that I will be focusing on throughout the year include the Connection Through Creativity project that was funded by the Mental Health Foundation of Nova Scotia. I'll be working with NSCC to update our artist map. We will be doing an artist video series with local videographer Kevin Price. We'll have summer programming, art shows, the development of the art kiosk, and an art bank program and working on our holiday series. We'll also each year be selecting two community events to support and we'll be taking over Halloween this year. So that will be really fun with some fun activities and fundraisers and that. And we'll also, we also have monthly artist socials that are a great way for artists to connect and engage with the creative community here in Pictou County. So it's important to note that while some of these events or activities that are ones that Creative Pictou County are putting on, a lot of them are in partnership with other organizations and groups within Pictou County, because there's so many great arts and culture initiatives already happening in our community that we want to help support. And if you're interested in learning anything about any of them, you can reach out to me and I would be happy to let you know or give you some more information about them. Um, some of the lessons that we've learned besides what I talked about earlier was that arts and culture boosts local economies in five distinct ways. It increases tourism, there's job creation and skill development, attracting and retraining businesses and, de and developing talent. Um, this also helps attract provincial and federal funding to the area. Now, this type of funding is available in the form of grants and uh, is kind of a year to year basis. So, you know, we're really trying to look at something a little more sustainable than that. And that's why we have our other initiatives going. Um, our arts coordinator uh, is really needed to maintain the consistent operations uh, and organizational growth. You know, what happens is we end up training somebody um, and getting them in perfect for the position and then someone ends up snagging them because we can't guarantee you know, their funding into the next year. And as it gets closer to the end, we're not there to get that guarantee. So um, we also have a board of very highly skilled, uh, highly trained people. Uh, so there's no, no shortage of skills and, and talent. However, their time that we have with them is limited. So having someone dedicated to do the other parts of the operations is very important that we're not utilizing this board for kind of mundane stuff. We should be using them for exactly what their talent is, I guess is uh, a good way to put it. Uh, too much, uh, there's far too much time spent every year to, uh, identifying funding sources and basic operations and not on the organization and, and community growth, which is really what we need to start uh, looking at more seriously. Uh, we've also learned that the full-time coordinator is critical uh, for a sustainable uh, nonprofit, and uh, we have made great strides, however, to find that uh, we've found that um, if we don't have this, we have really strong burnout among our board. So um, having Monica there has been quite helpful for everybody, and we have a very happy, well-working board right now because of it, and we want to make sure that we stay that way. Um, so, there's a sponsorship opportunity for the town of Delton, and what we're really asking here is a little bit of physical support, um, you know, helping us promote our events and, and, and partnerships, really, like us helping you guys support. 
uh, support your events as well. Uh, you know, we have a very uh, excellent outreach in the community and uh, I think a great partnership would, would be struck between the two groups. Um, we're looking for a little bit of financial support as well uh, through your grant programs uh, for operational costs and for certain events throughout the year. Um, and just basic endorsement and promotion of uh, the Creative Picto County's initiatives. And uh, we'd like to have a liaison between the two groups that we could be talking pretty freely back and forth and keeping an open line of communication between the two groups. Uh, and then also, you know, if there's any opportunities for us to join in in partnership with events that you're putting on, uh, not just promoting your events, but actually partnering and doing some events together, we would uh, really love that opportunity. Um, I think we skipped, did we skip one? Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's right, sorry, that's all right. Uh, so uh, what do we, what can we offer, I guess? Uh, we can offer great brand visibility, you know, logo placement on our sponsorship for, for on the websites and placement on all our advertising materials, you know, flyers, posters, and other print materials. Um, also, any kind of communications. We do a lot of e-blasts and newsletters, to be um, visibility on that. Um, event, as I said, event partnership opportunities. We can offer great opportunities to collaborate on, on events and put our two teams together and create one mega super team and uh, do some wonderful events together and opportunities for cross promotion. You know, all of our events, there's an opportunity to have banners and signage at these events and um, sharing marketing materials back and forth for different events would be really useful on both sides, I think. So that's really what we have to offer. Um, so if you need to connect with us, um, you can take a look at our website, which is creativepictocounty.ca, and uh, you can also participate in ArtFest um, and follow us on Facebook at Creative Picto County. Uh, follow us on Instagram at the same, uh, at Creative Picto County. And you can always contact Monica Rivers, our arts coordinator at Monica at creativepictocounty.com. Okay, thank you very much for the presentation. It's very informative. Um, I have some questions. I see Councillor Campbell has her hand up. Is that for a question? No, I'm sorry. Okay, no problem. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Take her away. Um, so I want to thank you first for the presentation and also for working with uh, the Curious Curl, the NSCC, and the Museum of Industry. They're all important parts of our town. So I was in the Curious Crow and saw the artwork on the walls. It's very impressive. Thank you for that. Um, I want to also thank you for the art show at the cost. I attended it and it was a very well put on. It was a great event, well organized, and Monica did a great job at that. Um, I agree with you that a staff person is usually needed for a board of directors. Uh, your board seems like the professionals who want to uh, uh, further strategic goals, not be bogged down in the operation of staff is critical for that. Um, we do have a marketing communication staff person. Her name is Paige Clark. Uh, you might just want, want, want to communicate with her. Uh, she did a lot of communication from the, between, between the two groups. Um, grant letters, so the annual grant you mentioned, they're due February 27th for next fiscal year, which starts April 1st. You want to get that in before February 27th. Um, and can you tell me um, what municipalities have already contributed to the funding? Um, this is Denise speaking. Uh, we're applying to every municipality this year. Um, and when we first started, it was actually the, the town of Glasgow that started the initiative for Creative Picto County. Um, so they've been a supporter all the way through the years. Um, we got funding for our first uh, version 1.0 of our website from the municipality of Picto County. Uh, last year, we got funding from the town of Westville and the town of Picto to support the strategic plan development. Um, there was a couple of years there that I wasn't involved, um, so I'm sorry if I'm missing anybody, <laughs> but that, that's what just top of mind over the past. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Is there any further questions or comments for the group? Go ahead, Councillor Knight. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, I, I were, the Mayor and myself are involved in the Heritage Committee. No one you're aware of it. It's a committee that we just started up recently. And uh, there's a rich heritage in Stellar, and you're probably aware of that as well. 
But the um, I was a little disappointed when we, we reached out, we were trying to get some um, paintings or mattings for our wall. We had hoped that some local artists would take, take the challenge and uh, work with it, one or, or many artists, but they didn't. Uh, what we do have a, a lady that's taken it on, and from what I'm given to understand, she's quite capable of, of, of doing the job, you know. Um, but that, uh, the committee, the Heritage Committee, would be something that we certainly would, would be involved with, um, and there's the homecoming. Um, Paige and Noel are working with us on that. Um, at, at this point, we, we are, uh, most of our resources are, are town resources and that's our public works. And we have been renovating the upstairs. Uh, if you wanted to meet sometime with either Noah or Paige or both and go through it. Sobeys have uh, offered to give us their, their, their 100, 100 anniversary display, which is their table and whatever have you. And that's going to be put, in, put up in one of the rooms. And we're trying to capture a lot of, um, the heritage before it's lost. There's a lot of stuff here, and I know some that we've lost it already before we we we've, we've, we've retained it. But our hopes, our hopes are to, to keep that history, and uh, with Noah and Paige, then work with the stu uh, students and and, then, and make it a resource basis where they can go in and uh, uh, vi revisit the history of Stellarton. But that's certainly one area that we we could use help now down, go, down the road you know the proposals we would be looking at more mirroring or paintings or whatever have you and uh, we're looking for photographs and that type of thing to put together it's, it's a huge job a huge job um, right now we're just like I said working with part-time workers putting it together so far so we just give has, has furnished the the, uh, the, uh, the structure for us upstairs and the town has done a lot of renovations there. Uh, so we're right there. So that, that's, I just want to bring that, highlight that's one area that your group could probably work, uh, work with us on. I, I guess I can just mention that I did meet with Noah back when he was starting to put together the call out on that. And he had shared that with me when it was all ready. And I did, um, we shared it through our Facebook and Instagram accounts and I put it on Artfest and we also put in our newsletter and then I know I there was an article that was also written on it that I had shared as well. So we did we did try to try to spread the, the word out as much as possible. So I I, I know I was speaking with um, Noah and he said that there wasn't a, a whole lot of interest. So that's unfortunate to hear, but thank you for bringing that up. It was, I should reach back out just to see how things went and how, how things are progressing. And we did end up hiring somebody with uh, Janet. Uh, she might be a member of the Creative Pictou County. Janet Wallace, is it? Yes, she yeah. is, yeah. It was great. Thank you for sharing that. Any other comments or questions? Yeah, the Heritage Room is a big part of a, our plan going forward. It's going to be, a, I think, a real nice attraction for tourists and also for locals who want to learn more about their history. And the, the mural idea, the 14 paintings or 12 paintings going up on the entrance is an excellent idea. It was initiated by Councillor Nice. We want to thank him for that too. Wonderful. So if there's no further questions from council, then we'll let you guys go. We want to thank you once again for the presentation. As I mentioned, we think you're a very uh, important group in Pictou County, and we look forward to seeing your letter for a request for financial contribution. Thank you. Your time, thank you. You're welcome. We really appreciate you thank having you. us tonight. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. You as well. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, so we can move on to item five, reports from staff. Uh, the first is 5A, Chief Mark Kovacs, Stellarton Police Service. The reports include it. Um, I'll just mention the calls are 188, which is there's a little bit of a downward trend lately, which is really good because we we're every, every month was a new record for calls, but the last couple have been down a little bit. So hopefully that's a trend that will continue. Um, the police are working really hard with all these calls. So other than that, I don't have any other comments or questions. Anybody else? 
Hearing none, can I have a motion to accept the report, please? I move. I'll second it. Moved by Councilor Knight, nice, seconded by Councilor Cam. All those in favor by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Most carried Nancy, thank you. Uh, 5B is Fire Chief Michael Selvin's report included. It's relatively brief. There's any questions or comments in the report? It's good to see there was no big uh, events in the months. So that's a really good thing. So uh, if there's no question, I have a motion to accept, please. So moved. I second. Moved by Councillor Knight, second by Councillor Wan. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All right. Contrary minded. Most carrying answer. Thank you. 5C is uh, Paige Clark's report. Uh, is there any comments or questions on that? I just wanted to mention that the walking tour map is become available. It's going to be on, uh, it's going to be produced soon. So that'll be something else for local and tourists to, uh, to use to learn more about our town. Um, the Olympics uh, with Blair Turnbull's participation and her gold medal, hopefully gold medal run. <laughs> um, we want to thank the staff for the banners and putting the Canadian flags along Main Street. It shows our support for our hometown hero. So thank you for that. And uh, that's all the comments that I had for that report. Everyone else is good. We have a motion, please. No move. I second it. Moved by Councillor Knight, seconded by Councillor Campbell. All those in favor signif signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you. 5D is the engineer reports. They're included. Is there questions or comments on that? I just wanted to mention that the once again is the same as January, or same as December, January, once again saved uh, quite a bit, significant amount of water. Uh, we're 7% lower than previous year. So once again, I want to thank the water treatment staff for their hard work in making that happen. Treated water is not free. It costs us money. So the less we use, the better. And the new ones, Brad Green and Annie Hardy, relatively new. They both have their, uh, some training done recently. So that's good to see as well. On the public works report, uh, water meter installations, the particular might start as early as mid-2022, so the middle of this year. And I also want to bring attention to the uh, Birch Hill Drive, the icing up there. It's caused, I think, by a catch basin on Cambridge. I'm assuming they'll be in the budget upcoming and some type of solution for that. I drove by the other day and it's actually the asphalt's torn up too. So we have to do something up there. I just wanted to bring that to the attention of staff. And that's all I have. Everyone else is good. I just wanted to thank the workers for the great job they did install remote mobile. Uh, I don't know how many people realize, but we have a small staff with five off, and we had some of them working 44 days straight. Uh, you know, that's 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 great. Uh, and I want to appreciate what they did. I just want to thank them for all the work. Thank you for that, Council Knight. It, it, we're a small but mighty team, and they're doing an amazing job. There's storm after storm after storm. It's hard to keep my driveway clean, let alone the whole town, but they're doing a really good job of doing that. So thanks for bringing that to our attention. The, the, this is Simon, and yeah, I agree 100%. And uh, I don't know if the public knows, but we also had a few cases of COVID in uh, the public works in the midst of the uh, some of these storms. So what they have done was tremendous, and I've received some positive feedback as well. Uh, Susan, if you can pass that along. Uh, multiple uh, residents have expressed their gratitude for the quick snow removals and uh, uh, the job. Uh, we still have some opportunities, but uh, okay. uh, overall, the vast majority, uh, it's been great, great, great. So awesome. I will really pass that on. Been, Thank you. The, uh, yeah. Lifting the great. snow on Main Street is really uh, happening in a timely fashion. It's accessibility issue, and it's really noticeable how much of a difference that makes. And our staff has worked overnight to do that. So uh, we appreciate their efforts. We definitely do. Uh, are you so moved? I don't know. Uh, did uh, Brian moved? No, no, I don't think. I no. move. So I'll that second. was moved. Moved I'll by second. Council, okay, moved by Councilor Vaughn, second by Councilor Knight. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Most carried Nancy. Thank you. Uh, five E's. No, the Laureate Community Living Coordinator report. Any questions or comments on that? 
Uh, just but I, I, just want, I just want to point out too, uh, I like the initiative that Noah's been taking uh, going forward and trying to bring new programs in. He, he talked to me, the, we spoke the other day about the, um, uh, he, uh, the artist and bringing artists in or programs in, learn to draw or whatever into that. And uh, with the um, homecoming, uh, because of the COVID, we can't meet, whatever have you. We had a virtual meeting the other day with Noah and Paige. And uh, there was a lot dumped on their plate to get, get this thing started. So hopefully next month we'll be able to um, have, have, have a, a, a meeting in person that we can sit down with some of the other stakeholders and go over, go over the um, well, this year's uh, homecoming. So it, yes, it, it, is on the, it is on the plans to go ahead with homecoming this year. And uh, I feel it's with, with the situation we've had for the last two years where nobody could get out everybody's going to be out to anything. I mean, they went to a truck pole uh, here a year ago. So I, I, I visualize all the events in Pico County are going to be well attended this year. I agree. And thank you for highlighting that, uh, Councillor Knight. Um, as mentioned in the notes here, they're planning for a restriction-free homecoming. So we're, we're planning to have a full blast of homecoming and we'll adjust as a make it closer if we need to, but hopefully we won't have to. I also wanted to highlight the uh, Volunteer of the Year Award application are now open. So if anyone would like to submit an application uh, nominating somebody, we'd be happy to uh, have that happen. And the community center was closed due to COVID-19. Is that open back up? Yes, it is. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, if there's no further questions or comments, I'll take a motion. I move. I'll second it. Moved by Councillor Knight, seconded by Councillor Campbell. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried Nancy, thank you. Move on to correspondence, 6A, Municipal Affairs and Housing, ICIP funding opportunity. Yes, so we are very excited that the um, province is now um, looking for applications for under the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program. Um, this is for wastewater, drinking water, solid waste. So um, Blaine and um, Finance and, and I will be looking at, and Council, of course, will be looking at some options uh, for their consideration to look at for this year. So that'll be part, part of our budget too, is figuring out which ones will apply for that. Exactly. Blaine will have some recommendations for Council. Perfect, thank you. There's no question on that. We can move on to 6B, which is CEO of Public Housing. Yes, letter. so uh, Council had asked, had directed me to write a letter uh, to regarding the snow clearing for Eastern Mainland Housing. Um, and the CEO of Public Housing, Stephen McIsaac, has responded and basically has stated that the conditions outlined in our letter were clearly illustrated. Uh, with photographs. So they have contacted the snow removal contractor and communicated that their performance is not acceptable and that they must comply with the requirements of the contract. So that's just for council's information. That's great to hear. That was February 2nd. Have we had any um, feedback from residents of the most recent storms, how they've been plowed out? Well, I, I live across the street from them and um, I guess that now they're calling the residents in advance asking them to move their cars and they haven't gone in and doing a better job from what I can see. That's good to hear. Thank you. We'll move on to, uh, there's another question. We'll move on to 5C, the 2021 Enabling Accessibility Fund. Uh, so yes, this is some disappointing news. Uh, the town of Stellarton had applied for uh, funding uh, application in July, which was due in July of 2021. Um, to basically uh, make this building, the town hall, accessible. And uh, just received word last week that unfortunately they, we were not um, successful in getting funding at this time. So that is very disappointing. Um, I did um, email our uh, Minister Frazier just asking for an explanation, uh, an application of this magnitude that required uh, a lot of work from senior staff uh, should at the very least have a reason as to why it was denied. So I have yet to hear back from that, but hopefully will shortly. Your Worship, your worship um, uh, as you might remember a couple of years ago, I had Sean Frazier come through and explain and show him the building and explain what we were doing. And this is the second time it was turned down. We don't seem to be getting any support from our MP. I mean, it's just, just falling on deaf ears. Um, 
you know, I, I don't know what you have to do to get money. So there was a letter of support from the MP, but it was denied. And, I don't, and I'm curious as to why, because it's yeah, by the that's, Nation Access Fund. That's exactly that's the big doing. question that I have is it's just the reasoning behind the denial. And like and like Councillor Knight did note, it, this was the second time we've applied under this program and the second time that we were denied with no explanation. So. And it seems tailor made for what we're asking for. So absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Is there any further comment or question on that? We'll move on to a request or sorry, committee of the whole report. Uh, the following recommendation is for council's consideration from the committee of the whole meeting held on January 24th, uh, 2022. And I will note that the under recommendation number one uh, council is, it is recommended to approve a donation of $100 uh, to the 37th annual Pictou County Bank Memorial Tournament, but that was canceled due to COVID restrictions. So that will go back into the annual grant fund. Um, recommendation number two, on recommendation of Committee of the Whole, Council approve a donation of $200 to the Roots for Youth Coldest Night of the Year campaign. I think we've already discussed this. Can we have a motion to approve recommendation number two, please? So moved. I second. Moved by Councilor Knight, second by Councilor Wan. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded, most carried nicely. Thank you. Uh, next is request for proposals and information technology. It's an RFP. We RFP'd it uh, for the first time in a few years, and the CEO yes. will tell us the results. Correct. So six proposals were submitted uh, for <laughs> IT services for the town of Stellarton. Uh, we had uh, a committee made up uh, who was comprised of myself, uh, Police Commissioner Kevin Mason, who is uh, quite a, um, up on IT, uh, we also had Mark Tebow with the Stellarton Police Department, Andy Hardery, uh, the Town of Stellarton Water Department, and Paige Clark, Marketing Communications Coordinator. Um, the Police Department and the Water Department are critical infrastructure that requires, um, obviously, um, internet 24-7. Uh, so that's why they were um, a very important part of the committee. Uh, so we received six proposals and we went down through um, the scope, qualification, reference and cost. And um, what we all unanimously recommend uh, for council's consideration is Lucas Technology. Uh, and they will be at $18,720 per year. Um, and that's just the uh, one uh, half a day per week cost. Um, there will be um, costs considered on top of that, depending on some issues that we have, but it is indeed noteworthy that we've had the same IT service provider uh, for well over 15 years. So it was, it was time to kind of um, revisit this. Okay. Uh, I want to uh, thank you, the CAO, for uh, engaging the police service to a large extent in this. You're right. They're a huge user of our IT and they, uh, they need some um, updating and so to have them part of this committee is really valuable. So I want to thank uh, the CAO, also Kevin Mason with a large computer background, Mark, Mark from the police, Andy and Paige for making this a RFP recommendation to us. How does council feel about it? Um, so I have a couple. Um, I'm sorry, go uh, ahead, Sam. Thank you. I'm just trying to understand the, uh, um, there's some numbers on there of scoring percent, uh, and I'm trying to understand what they mean. It's 5, 15, 20, so, 50, 16. So, yes. So, if you notice on the on the very left column, the scoring, we, we based it out of, so for the scope, if they understood the scope of the RFP, that was worth 10%. 20% uh, was the qualification if they, you know, if they had um, experience working with other municipalities. Um, references were worth 20, and of course, the cost was worth 50%. Um, and then the cost uh, was broken down to if, if they were within 5%, then they would be, there was a certain um, formula for that as well. So that was, a, that, was a, that was the formula for that. So the points at the bottom, you will notice um, um, that's what they were scored at. Okay, 90 compared to 88 and 70. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. Susan, uh, where are they located? Um, Lucas Technologies from Picto. Uh, Data Guide Technologies is in New Glasgow. Uh, Green PI is in Toronto. Uh, Scotia Logic is in Sydney. 
IMP is in Halifax and GMA is in um, Truro. Do we have somebody close at hand for the troubleshooting, do we? Yes, we Some do. Area? Okay, I'll make, yeah. a to, uh, I'll make a motion to accept the uh, recommendation by the committee. I second that. Moved by Councillor Knight, second by Councillor Wand, and I agree with Councillor Knight that it's nice to have someone local who can respond quickly, but the ones we've been using are from Cape Breton, and uh, to have someone local, plus you support the local economy too, so it's, it's nice to see that someone from Pictou as a county is a successful applicant here. All is successful as long as everyone votes in favour. All those <laughs> in favour say aye. Aye. Uh, contrary minded. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is a temporary boring resolution. I will read that off. It's for amount of $210,000 for the salt shed public works. Whereas section 66 of the Municipal Government Act provides that the Council of the Town of Stellarton, subject to the approval of the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, may borrow to expend funds for a capital purchase authorized by statute. Whereas the Council of the Town of Stellarton has adopted a capital budget for this fiscal year as required by Section 65 of the Municipal Government Act, and are so authorized to expend funds for capital purposes identified in their capital budget. And whereas the Council of the Town of Stellarton has determined to borrow for the purpose of a salt shed for public works, be it therefore resolved that under the authority of Section 66 of the Municipal Government Act, the Council of the Town of Stellarton borrow some or sums not exceeding $210,000 for the purpose set out above, subject to the approval of the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. That the sum be borrowed by the issue and sale of the adventures of the Council of the Town of Stellarton to such an amount as the Council deems necessary. That the issue of debentures be postponed pursuant to Section 92 of the Municipal Government Act, and that the Council bore from time to time a sum not exceeding $210,000 $210, in total from any charter bank or trust company doing business in Nova Scotia. That the sum be borrowed for a period not exceeding 12 months from the date of the approval of the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing of this resolution. That the interest payable on the board be paid at a rate to be agreed upon, and that the amount borrowed be repaid from the proceeds of the debentures when sold. That was part of our capital budget. Um, is there any questions or concerns with the temporary board resolution? If not, can I have a motion to, to uh, approve it, please? I shall move. I'll second it. Moved by Councillor Wan, seconded by Councillor Knight. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the open forum. I don't see, I just see uh, John here is the, uh, from the media. So I don't think there's anybody who wants to speak at the open forum. So we'll move on to that. Our next council meeting is March 14th, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. start time. We're hoping that'll be in person. Uh, we'll see when we get a little closer to the date. And can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Don't move. Yeah, he's not here. <laughs> uh, moved by Councillor Knight. Uh, meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. And I uh, will move into in camera. All right. Just let me. I don't know if uh, John has any questions for Council before we move into in camera. Maybe not. Let me stop the recording.